Your choice, peaches, plums, or nectarines, only $2.99 per pound. Fresh USDA bone-in strip steak, $14.99 per pound. Schmidt Italian sliced bread, 20-ounce loaf, hot price, $4.39. Scott Paper Towels, choose a size roll, $2.59. Save $1.60 on Purex liquid laundry detergent, 50-ounce bottle, hot price, $4.99. All stores open Monday through Saturday until 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Tuesday, February 26, 2019. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us. Topping our news, reports tonight that a senior member of the Department of Public Prosecutions has been placed on administrative leave for allegedly forging a document. However, the department remains tight-lipped on just what grounds the individual has been so far temporarily relieved of their duties. We understand that the individual was placed on administrative leave for allegedly forging a legal document known as a nole prosecu. This is a declaration made to a judge by a prosecutor in a criminal case that they no longer wish to prosecute. The document requires the approval of the director before it can be presented to the court. However, sources say the individual did not seek the permission of the DPP, Mr. Larry Musseton, before filing the document. As for comment on these allegations, Mr. Musseton told us, quote, we do not comment on personal matters, unquote. In other news, negotiations between the Ministry of Education and the Bermuda Union of Teachers were canceled on February 22nd, that was Friday, and that it was revealed that the BUT had a vote of no confidence in Permanent Secretary Valerie Robinson James and the Commissioner of Education, Kalmar Richards. BUT General Secretary Mike Charles reflects on what took place on Friday. Mr. Charles said one of the main sticking issues is the standard base grading, SBG, which was improperly set up four years ago, and now computers are not set up to complete that sort of report cards. Teachers had a meeting uh, this, this week, last week, last week Thursday. There was a, at the AGM or annual general meeting, um, under any other business, the situation with the SBGs and reporting came up. Um, there is, again, a lot of angst among our teachers concerning this SPGs. Mr. Charles said he and the teachers are beginning to view negotiations as a sham and a joke. And teachers are getting, our teachers and the team are getting tired. And we have to bring this thing to a close. We, we keep getting delays. And we've been through two PSNTs. We've been through three chairpersons of PSNTs, and it goes on and on. And it's, it's becoming really, it's almost a farce, what is happening right now. The general secretary added that the BUT have attempted to show the seriousness of matters in several ways. Uh, because it's not only just negotiations. Over the, the last couple of years, we've had sick outs, we've had sit outs, we've had sit ins. <laughs> we have had a number of, of, of industrial actions to bring uh, some kind of attention to what teachers are going through. And it's not only negotiations. We've had problems with facilities. We've had the mold problem. We have problems with uh, violent behavior in schools. He says it took more than one meeting to decide on the vote of no confidence. This vote is, is a succession of incompetence by the people who are supposed to be leading the system. A bit of frustration began to set in, and the union chief said, we need competent officials from the ministry in negotiations. And I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Mike. In other news, detectives are investigating a suspicious incident reported from the Hub Electronics store on Middle Road in Warwick. It happened around 11 a.m. Monday morning with security cameras there capturing footage of a suspicious individual who apparently entered the store. The footage has since been circulated on social media and has raised alarm in the community. Witnesses or any member of the public with relevant information, in particular those who may know the individuals involved, are encouraged to call Detective Sergeant Dean Martin at the series 
Serious Crime Unit on 247 1739, or of course the Confidential Crime Stoppers Hotline at 800 8477. Coming up, Cordell Riley reacts to the controversial report from the UK, a new alliance to help deal with the diabetes crisis, and your latest weather forecast. Stay with us. Our Tempur-Pedic gives us the best night's sleep ever. I recommend my Tempur-Pedic to everybody. The most highly recommended bed in America just got better. Introducing the all-new, reinvented Tempur-Pedic. Designed with the most pressure-relieving material we've ever created and superior cool-to-touch technology. It adapts and responds to your body's unique needs throughout the night for your deepest, most rejuvenating sleep. At Furniture Walk, furnishing Bermuda's homes for over 30 years. 12 Harvey Road, Paget, 292-5209. You can count on us. Avocados, hot price, two for $3. Fresh Purdue Oven Supper Roaster, $1.99 per pound. Kreider 18-pack large white eggs, hot price, for $2.95. Hunt's Tomato Ketchup 35-ounce squeeze bottle for $2.99. Charmin Essentials Strong Toilet Tissue, one roll, hot price, $1.19. All stores open Monday through Saturday until 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. The Bermuda Olympic Association's Women in Sport Committee invites you to be the champion of your life. A banquet and expo on March 8th and 9th at the Fairmont Hamilton Princess. In celebration of International Women's Day, our illustrious banquet keynote speakers are U.S. Olympians Hazel Clark and Gerald Miles Clark, while a panel of some of Bermuda's top female athletes, past and present, will be featured at the expo. Join us in encouraging girls and women to be the champions of their lives. For more information, visit olympics.bm. Welcome back. No need to panic. That's the advice from the political commentator Cordell Riley in reaction to that controversial report from the UK's Foreign Affairs Committee. The committee, which is an arm of the British Parliament, had recommended that all British citizens living in an overseas territory be allowed the right to vote and to run for office. That recommendation has since prompted calls for independence should the UK government give it serious consideration. Speaking to Turai Trot, Mr. Riley also criticized the committee for ignoring his well, well, first of all, it's the Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, so this is the committee that gives oversight to the Foreign Affairs Office, so in other words, an advisory capacity. Um, so these are recommendations. I think um, my personal view that the recommendations are rather retrograde. Um, it it, it uh, sort of um, goes back to the 70s when that actually was the place where that you can come and work in Bermuda for three years and you had uh, the right to vote. Now, if you go back into our history, you'll see that there was, there was a policy and policy and policy to bring whites in to displace blacks uh, going, I think, as late as the, uh, the 1960s. Um, and they will be then given the right to vote. And then, of course, that's what sort of kept um, Bermudians uh, or from black Bermudians from taking hold of the government uh, for years. So I think, um, you know, it's to me, it's a really retrograde, retrograde step. They've always, the British have always respected the fact that we're a tiny island. Um, so I don't know if this idea is actually going to have uh, any legs because, um, you know, it's, it's a recommendation and it has to be um, debated and accepted by the Foreign, uh, Foreign Commonwealth Committee. So I, I don't think uh, this is, is really going to fly. Mr. Riley looks to independence as the only solution when asked how the island would respond to the unlikely scenario in which the UK government decided to abolish the rights of Bermudian status holders. I think so. I mean, you're probably skating around the I word. Um, I think uh, independence will certainly have to be uh, discussed. I mean, one of the things that's coming out of this is the fact that Britain has its hands full right now with uh, Brexit, with dealing with the European Union. Um, you know, why would you want to deflect from your issues by looking at the um, it, its colonies? It does the timing. Uh, doesn't seem to make any kind of uh, a sense to me that they want to be doing this uh, right now. But if they should uh, decide that maybe this is something that they should pursue, I think, like the Premier said, that we should um, deal with this rather rather, rather rigorously. Um, I don't think this is uh, a positive step. 
Um, again, they've always respected the fact that we have been a, a you know, we have a small landmass. In other news, a new offensive launched in the battle against diabetes and other lifestyle diseases. This time it's the Seventh-day Adventist Church joining forces with Premier Health and Wellness Center to bring about a better understanding of these conditions and how they may even be reversed. Gary Moreno has a story on this initiative. The initiative was recently launched at the Somerset Seventh-day Adventist Church. Participants were provided free services by medical Dr. Stanley James, Dr. Ashley Smith and nutritionist Natalie Bean. It's no secret Bermuda has one of the highest rates of diabetes and amputations in the world. And Dr. James says as such, any effort to arm residents with information to help combat the illness should be welcomed. This action now is because it's a convenient time, beginning of the year, to uh, join forces with the local church who had an outreach program to the community. And it's the starting of a new year, starting of new principles, new practices, and so that's the reason why. Not, not the least of which, we would agree that the epidemic in Bermuda is, is significant. Dr. Smith explained there is a greater need than you might think for community-based services like this. We're seeing increasing rates of um, cancer, of diabetes, of kidney failure, chronic kidney disease, um, loss of limbs, so amputations. Um, and so we want to do something to combat that and try to turn the tides and help to reverse those, um, those trending numbers for Bermuda as a whole. The initiative is called Diabetes Undone, and nutritionist Ms. Bean revealed the thinking behind it. The goal of Diabetes Undone is to give people an idea of lifestyle changes that they can make to actually reverse their disease, and not only diabetes, but it also helps other lifestyle-related chronic diseases, as was mentioned, cancer, high blood pressure, and even obesity. Given the prevalence of the disease on the island and the numerous complications associated with it, including blindness and kidney failure, there is a huge impetus for dealing with it in a meaningful way. But is it really possible to cure diabetes? When we say can it be cured, we have to figure out what we mean by that. You, if you have diabetes, you're always susceptible to have your numbers go up if you do not take the medicines and have the correct lifestyle. So I wouldn't use the word cure. I would say it's possible to reverse the direction and the trend of your diabetes. So if your sugar is going up, you can bring it back down without taking, uh, necessarily taking the medicines uh, in the proportion that you are taking them. You can reduce your medications and also lower your sugars simply by changing your diet and increasing your activity. The plan, according to Dr. James, is to take diabetes undone to all parts of the island as his group, along with the Seventh-day Adventist Church, seek to spread the gospel of healthy practices to, if not cure, at least reverse the effects of so-called lifestyle diseases. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Gary. Turning to weather news, a beautiful day today with lots of sunshine, and our Wednesday looks to be the same. Let's go to Active the headquarters for the latest. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. This AccuWeather forecast is brought to us by the good folks at the BFNM Insurance Group. Glad that you're tuned in to ZBM. We are watching uh, for a pretty active weather pattern here as we move on through the next few days with a pair of low pressure systems that will send some rain into our area. Now, the forecast begins fairly tame. Not much going on on the uh, satellite estimated radar. Uh, we're uh, unable to find uh, much going on when it comes to uh, local rain, although the waves are fairly big. So we're dry. We're at 64 degrees. Uh, it's been kind of a cool day. Temperatures maybe 2 or 3 degrees below normal for the balance of the day uh, for this time of the year. Wind from the west at 10 to 15 knots. Water temp 67 right now. Humidity uh, between 50 and 55. Uh, and uh, again, while the waves on the inside are pretty manageable, two to four foot waves, we do have 10 to 15 foot waves, large swells uh, producing a significant rise and fall for anybody out there on a boat. Uh, and because of that, for good reason, a small craft warning continues through tonight, through Wednesday, and even into Thursday morning. Uh, so those big waves will continue with low pressure offshore. And a lot of this is being driven by a monstrous area of low pressure closer to Greenland. Very large system uh, sending big waves in all directions across the northern and central Atlantic. So low tide is coming up soon at 7.55, another high tide at 2.33 a.m. Low tide uh, around mid-morning on Wednesday 
and then another high tide in the middle of the afternoon at 2.49. Partly cloudy, kind of a tame night, nothing too wild for us. Uh, tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds. We're still dry tomorrow, so this looks good. 65 degrees, a little on the cool side, but not off the charts. Now, after this dry spell comes to a conclusion, here's our high-pressure system that has been protecting us and will continue to do so for another 24 hours. It uh, becomes more active. Here we get into Thursday with the next area of low pressure approaching. Here comes the rain on Thursday, and you can see as we stop the uh, animation at 11 p.m., a uh, significant uh, batch of rain right over our fair island. So get ready for some wet weather Thursday into Friday and even Saturday with another system continuing the rain chance. Bottom line here is enjoy the dry weather while we have it tonight and tomorrow. Down into the Caribbean, Jamaica looks good, 86, partly sunny. There are showers in Barbados and into Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, the gateway forecast, Toronto, it's a little snowy there, 22, much colder. Uh, cold weather pattern for New York City and Boston as well. Temperatures below normal uh, now on uh, this side of the recent storm system. Atlanta is wet. Miami is wet. We've been wet in the southeast, and that trend is continuing uh, even into Thursday. Uh, a couple of wet days here. London, very mild, 64. Our extended forecast, again, nice and dry tonight, nice and dry Wednesday, then and this comes to a screeching halt with wet weather Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three days in a row with some off and on rain. We will turn milder, warmer, and more humid as well. Sunday looks nice, though, 70 and uh, a little drier. We'll send it back to you. AccuWeather was presented by BF&M Insurance Group. Stay tuned, we'll have more news after this brief intermission. Take a test drive today at Ultimate Motors. Surface Trends is proud to offer Bermuda's best selection of natural and exotic stone, carefully selected and imported from Italy and Brazil. We also stock the newest collection from Caesar Stone and Sile Stone. Don't forget our wide variety of gorgeous porcelain wood plank tiles, including our exclusive Bermuda cedar tile, as well as natural travertines suitable for outdoors and indoors. Bathroom and pool tiles are in stock too. Stop by our showroom at 17 Serpentine Road, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1. At the Bermuda Festival, Broadway comes to the stage on March 1st and 2nd. The hilarious Broadway's next hit musical is an unscripted theatrical show. Master improvisers gather hit song suggestions from the audience and create a spontaneous evening of music, humor, and laughter. Every song is fresh. Every scene is new. Every night is different. It's all improvised. It's all funny. And it's perfect family entertainment. For tickets, visit Ptix or BermudaFestival.org. Celebrating the empowerment of women. She is art. 44th Annual Bermuda Festival. I'm Tony Waterman. Coming up on The Breakdown this week. International business. It's the main pillar of Bermuda's economy, generating thousands of jobs and injecting millions into the economy. But as an entire generation gets set to retire, what's being done to entice the next wave of leaders to take up the mantle? Plus, ecotourism. It's all the rage with travelers, but very few view Bermuda as a nature destination. We'll take a look at how the railway trail could not only attract eco-conscious tourists, but could also be the genesis for a whole new suite of tourism offerings. And that's Thursday at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV9. And you're watching the Tuesday edition of Bermuda Tonight. Kite flyers have defended their hobby against complaints by residents that they have caused a nuisance during rest hours. Aware of continuous complaints, the Bermuda Police Service's Western Community Action Team recently hosted a public meeting to try and mediate the situation. One of the island's leading group of kite flyers says their members try to follow the law, while residents have said enough is enough. Troy Trot brings us the story. A kite flies above. A typical day for the island, you might say, but some residents are complaining. Noisy kites are becoming too much to bear and they want something done. But passionate kite flyers say they are trying not to disturb others. 
which is why the Bermuda Police Service held a public meeting earlier this month to try and bring about a resolution to the complaints, which have already led to physical altercations and police intervention. What we want to do is, is um, bring all parties together where they can discuss some of these issues. Police Chief Inspector Tracy Adams is well aware of the situation. He was a facilitator at the community meeting, which attracted around 50 people. One problem police have had to deal with is annoyed residents deciding to take matters into their own hands. Recently learned of, uh, of people cutting the kites and the material that we understand that they're using now poses a risk and danger to the public and the community. Police are asking kite flyers to be mindful of the effect noisy kites can have on their neighbors. We know that there's no time specific, there's no specific time around the legislation as to when people can fly kites, but we're asking people to be both considerate and respectful. Police Constable Sarifa Bridgman feels the recent meeting went well and did help to relieve tensions. Persons left the meeting feeling um, a bit comfortable that they were hurt because some people thought initially that people weren't willing to listen to their concerns and they felt that it was a very good idea of having the meeting. So we're looking at not only that one meeting, but we're looking at moving towards central and the eastern area. Joshua Butler is passionate about kites and is a member of the group known as Kite Warriors. He acknowledges that sometimes the noise from kites can be an issue. I would not deny that there have been kites that have been left up, um, passed up, but um, we try to make it a must that, you know, guys put a kite storm, by on the sun goes down. Um, we don't condone that. Asked which hours in the day his group believes are reasonable in which to fly their kites, Mr. Butler explained. Well, see, it's hard to put a time limit to it, you understand, because we're working with nature, we're working with the elements. So we might have this um, notion that we're going to wake up and fly the kite because the wind when we went down the night before was, was blowing. But when we got up in the morning, the wind is gone. You know, it's moved on. You know, some residents have suggested that kite flyers should restrict their flying solely to open spaces uh, like parks, <laughs> etc. If I'm right here in a public park and I put my kite out 200 yards, it's going over somebody's house or it's going in a residential area. And so the sun is going to travel. So it's really, it's, it's hard to say. And, of course, that was Terai Trot reporting. Turning to sports now, Bermuda men's national football team draw Cuba and Bermudian-born swimmer has an impressive first day during Swimming Invitational Classic. Earl Basin has it all in tonight's sports report. Bermuda's men's senior national team drew 2-2 in Cuba last evening. They will play a FIFA and CONCACAF sanctioned match against Cuba come tomorrow. Meanwhile, Dante Lavrock and his Sligo Rovers teammates went down 2-1 to, to Cork City in Irish Premier Football League action. Bermuda-born Jade Hanna competed in the first Austra Spring Swimming Invitational Classic. On day one, she would make three appearances on the podium. Hanna would win the gold medal during the girls' 16 and over 200-meter backstroke A final, clocking a time of 2 21 Hanna would then clock a gold medal time of 26-18 in the girls' 16 and over 50-meter freestyle final. The girls' 16 and over 50-meter backstroke A final gold medal was also won by Hanna, who touched the wall in a time of 28.62. The Bermuda Amateur Swimming Association hosted their second series short course swimming race at the Bassa Pool and a new record was established in the 15 to 16 boys 4x50 meter short course freestyle relay. The team of Jack Harvey, Finn Mosley, Sam Williamson and Caleb Ingham are now the holders after clocking a time of 141.12. The 2019 cricket season for Dowry Rollins is a big one as he attempts to solidify a position in all formats of cricket for Sussex. Like you said, it's probably an even bigger year than last year. Um, probably, you know, the year, 21 years old. Um, having played sort of one format last year, I think, looking to solidify a spot in, in the other two, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I know it's a big year. I'm looking forward to it. Just looking forward to keep enjoying my cricket and, and, and having fun. I mean, when, when I get back, um, I'm going straight to South Africa the, the next couple of days, um, okay. for about 10 days, so um, that'll sort of get any kinks out that, that, are, that are there at the moment. But um, I think this break by just, you know, being home, with, I'll get the bit in my teeth again to play, um, you know, so I probably needed another break and stuff. And 
um, you know, but I'm still feeling confident going back into the into the into the year and and um, hopefully you know find a, a spot to start in, in the team. Jono James and her Thomas College women's track and field teammates competed at the program's first NCAA Division III New England Regional Indoor Championships at the Bowen College. James would run the third leg for the Thomas College women's 4x200 meter relay team that finished 23rd, blocking a time of 158.50. James would also run the third leg for the Thomas College women's 4x400 meter relay team that was clocked at 501.75, finishing 18th. Bermuda Nap Bowl Association Senior League makeup matches took place at the Bernard Park with a triple header last evening that produced a total of 205 goals on the night. In a top of the table clash, the Phoenix Heat would defeat the Lindos Tigers 39 to 25. Danielle Reyna would lead the Phoenix Heat to victory with 32 goals, while Jakenia Trot scored 18 goals for the Lindos Tigers. The Thunder won the Battle of the Storm 36 to 33 over the Lightning. MVP Nabila Nazir would score 25 goals for the Storm Thunder, while MVP Dan Daria Benjamin scored a game-high 28 goals for the Storm Lightning. The North Philadelphia Daily Rams defeated Robin Hood 51-21. to Dorica Simon scored 27 goals for the North Philadelphia Daily Rams, while Charlie Bridgman, the Robin Hood MVP, scored 12 goals. The Bermuda Basketball Association's Winter League season continued with a doubleheader inside the Bermuda College Gymnasium last evening. The Knights saw a total of 254 points scored between the four teams. Game 1 saw the Warwick Rimrockers defeat the Smith Corps Kings 80-53. Ronald Bushner scored 19 points for the Warwick Rimrockers to go along with 6 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals and 1 block shot. Also scoring 19 points for the Warwick Rimrockers was Jarrell Smith. He would add 3 rebounds, 10 assists and 1 steal. Marquez Laws would lead the Smith Court Kings with 19 points to go along with 5 rebounds and 4 assists. The Hamilton City Twisters defeated the Devonshire Chargers 79-42 in the nightcap. In field hockey action, the Pink Robins would defeat the Bermuda Under-21 team 8-2, with the Pink Robins getting five goals off the stick of Liana Kotze. Emma Ranger would add a hat-trick for the Pink Robins. Lauren Cardwell would score both goals for the Bermuda Under-17 team. In another match, the mixed B team would defeat the Canaries 5-2. In Friesenbrook, Meyer, Continental Bowling League action at the Work Lanes last evening, it saw the Quickie Licky Laundry defeat the Invaders 28-2. The Spice Snakes got by the Cubs 19-11, while the Pin Jammers defeated the Bermuda Pest Control 19-11 as well. New Hope edged the Odd Bowls 16-14, and the Nifty Rollers defeated the Underdogs 16.5-13.5. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Hey, Smokey, let's get lunch from the Marketplace Food Court. You know what? That sounds good. They have oxtails, pumpkin, curried lamb, lemon chicken, sweet and sour ribs, vegetable stir-fry, and the variety goes on. Their chefs are good. They'll set you right off of all the good carbons. And don't forget the special dishes from the island. It doesn't matter. Well, no matter what you feel like eating, Marketplace will have it. You know, it's quick, it's quality, and at prices you can count on. Visit us seven days a week. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Made for you daily at the Hamilton Marketplace Food Court. At Argus, our interest is you, each of you. Around here, we know that when two people seem the same, they can have very different insurance needs for their health, home, work, and future. Which is why we take the time to get to know you as an individual so we can provide insurance coverage that fits your life. Because after all, our interest is you. Let's Talk is back. The TV talk show hosted by Gary Marino airs live at 8 p.m. on Mondays. Real conversations with key figures in public life. Going beyond the sound bites to explore and contextualize current affairs. And there's lots to talk about. Jobs, tax reform, our changing economy, education, crime, and the environment. Discussing the issues that matter in depth and with personality. A new studio, a new look, or a new season. That's Let's Talk. Live Mondays at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV 9 and repeated at 7 a.m. on Wednesdays. And Sundays at 8 a.m. How quickly the time goes. Well, that's our newscast for tonight. I'm Diane Brewer. Thanks for sharing your Tuesday evening with us, everyone. Good night.